In this series of Snap Circuits videos, we're going to start with Project 193, which is the light alarm, and we're going to go to Project 205, which is the third rendition of making your own battery. So, with Project 193, they call it the light alarm. There it is in our book, and there it is on the board. And the light alarm is a pretty simple circuit. We just have our battery, our slide switch, red LED, 5.1K resistor and our PNP transistor. Now the way this circuit is laid out, if we were to turn on the circuit, nothing happens with the LED. The LED stays off. But with our little jump wire here, this can be used as kind of a trip wire for something. And if it should ever get disconnected from here, whether it be from this point or that point, the LED will come on. And if it it's reattached, the LED goes off, if it breaks, the LED comes on, etc. etc. Now the reason this happens is because the way a PNP transistor turns on and off is it needs a ground reference to turn our LED on as opposed to an NPN, which needs a positive voltage reference to turn on an NPN transistor. So when this is disconnected, our PNP transistor can turn on and allow current flow to light our LED. When it's shorted here, the LED goes off because, again, the PNP transistor is not on. And that's because we are shorting across the gate here directly to ground. So positive is going directly through the resistor to ground. None of it is going into the gate of the PNP transistor. Thus, the PNP transistor cannot turn on and light our LED until we take that short away so that it can get current through our gate now. Now, of course... It doesn't show in the book, but if you wanted this to be an NPN-derived circuit, all you'd have to do is take our 5.1K resistor, move it up here, and then use the short in place where the resistor is here if you wanted to have an NPN transistor on this circuit. You could also, of course, move the LED down to the other side too, but that's if you wanted to use an NPN. So that is the... Project 193, the light alarm. Now we're going to look at 194, which they call the brighter light alarm. Now with Project 194, the brighter light alarm, all we did was change out our resistor and our LED to now have the 2.5 volt lamp and a 100 ohm resistor across the gate here. And by using the lower resistor, we need to do that because with our lamp, our lamp is a lower resistance item than the resistor is. So we have to compensate by decreasing the resistance on the gate because we need more current to flow through the PNP transistor to light our 2.5 volt lamp. So as before, when we turn on the circuit, when we have our short here, the light's not going to light up. But if, of course, we break that connection, our 2.5 volt lamp lights up because our PNP transistor has turned on with our reference to ground there through its gate. Yet if we short the connection, the lamp goes out because the transistor is not on, break it, and comes back on. And as before, if this was to be an NPN based circuit, we would simply swap these connections around if it's an NPN, and it would work that way as well. So that is project 199, the brighter light alarm. Now we're moving to Project 195, which they call the Lazy Fan. So here we are with Project number 195, which is the Lazy Fan. There's our circuit in the book. And there it is on the board. And the way this circuit works is we make use of our motor connected with the fan blade across our NPN transistor. So we obviously have our NPN transistor turning the fan on and off by controlling the gate here. There goes the book. And so we have a couple of resistors and we also have the big 470 microfarad capacitor across here that is providing current to our gate control. Now if we press our press switch, our fan comes on for a little while and slows to a stop. And it stays that way as long as our press switch is held. If we take our hand off the press switch and wait several seconds and try again 
Now the fan turns for a little bit and then comes to a stop again. So the obvious question then becomes, well, why is the circuit doing this? In fact, if we don't wait long enough, the fan won't turn at all. Well, what's happening is, is our gate, of course, is controlled via positive current because this is an NPN, so we get a gear from the positive side. And as I pointed out, our circuit is making use of two resistors. We have our 100,000 ohm, and then we have a 100 ohm, and then we have our big 470 microfarad capacitor. So what happens is, our capacitor starts off uncharged. And the thing about an uncharged capacitor is it has low resistance. So a lot of current can go flow, flow through this side of the circuit, turning our NPN transistor on, allowing our motor to come up to speed. Now as this capacitor charges, the resistance of it goes up too. And so less current goes to our NPN, the motor starts slowing down. And when this gets to full charge, well then, it's basically infinite resistance. No current can go through, so the NPN transistor stays off and the motor does not run. So now that we've waited some time, our motor can run for a little bit. Now when the circuit is off, the resistor over here is helping to discharge the capacitor as the circuit off because it flows through our 100,000 100 and 5.1 K resistor, so that helps discharge it over time. And here's a little proof of concept that the capacitor is what's killing the circuit as it runs. If I take this and put it there, I can short the capacitor out real quick. And then the fan will run. Now if I were to bypass that capacitor, So what I did there is I bypassed the capacitor so that the capacitor is not in the circuit. It just takes a short through the wire directly to our NPN. So that way the capacitor never charges and it gets continuous current flow to our transistor. So again, when this is uncharged, it allows the NPN transistor to come on full so our fan runs full. And as it charges, resistance goes up, less current gets to the NPN transistor, causing our fan to run slower and slower until it stops when the capacitor is fully charged. Now, the next project, once I open the book back up to where I left off, let's see, is project 196, which is the laser light. And for that, all we're going to do is change our motor out for our 6 volt lamp. So take the head off that remove that piece here's our 6 volt lamp put that into the circuit and I will go ahead and discharge that and now when we use the circuit with our 6 volt lamp there we get a pulse of light and then it quickly goes out. And again, as same as before, if we wait some time, we probably have to wait a bit longer here, but I'll do the little quick short method just for the sake of it. And it does again. So again, the circuit is behaving the same way as it did before. We just took the motor out and we put our lamp in place of the motor. And so again, the lamp is behaving the same way where when this is uncharged, the lamp is nice and bright, and as it charges, it quickly goes out until, again, no more current can flow through the gate of our NPN transistor, allowing this to be on. Near that time, we allowed it to discharge some. And again, just like before, we can just bypass the whole circuit, just to show that our capacitor is what's controlling that NPN. So that is how project number 198, 196 works, excuse me, which is the laser light. So now we're doing 197, which is the water alarm. So in project 197, we have our water alarm. There's what it looks like in our book. There it is on the board. 
And so here we're making use of our two NPN and PNP transistors connected with our speaker and we're also using our whistle trip in accordance with a few resistors and we're testing our circuit with the press switch and then with our two jumper leads these go into a cup of water and then depending on conditions we should hear kind of a squeal from the speaker here which is actually the whistle chip generating it and then coming out of our speaker so the first obvious test is if we put these into a cup that has no water, so it's the same thing as if I leave them like this. If I press the press switch, nothing happens. Now there's a little bit of noise from the speaker, but there's no continuous audio, so they're not detecting anything. So bring in our cup of water right here. And let's see if I can get these in here without them touching each other. So that one's toward the top. That one's a little further toward the bottom. Now let's see what our circuit does now that we've got the jumpers in the water. So as we hear from that, when we have these in the water, it makes a tone because water has resistance to it. And it's not fairly conductive, but it still has some conductance to it, and so our current is able to travel between our two jumpers within the water there and because of the resistance we can get a tone out of the speaker. Now what would happen if the solution that we put this in, in this case water, was more conductive? Well there's an easy way to do that. Good old salt. So when we add salt to water we end up making brine which is an electrolyte and that allows current to be conducted through our water a lot more easily because salt is able to carry the ions and electrons more easily through the water. So if we have our circuit on see it's kind of going up in tone So when we put salt in there, it actually went up in tone, and that's because there's more current going through the water now, less resistance. And because of that, the frequency of our sound ends up going up, as before where it was lower, because there was more resistance in the water there, being less conductive without the salt. So that is how project number 197 works. Now 198, that's our radio announcer. So in this project, we're looking at project 198, which is the radio announcer. And there's our circuit in the book, and here it is on the board. And basically, the way the radio announcer circuit works is we're taking our speaker, and we're using it as an audio input source. Instead of outputting audio, we're actually going to put audio into the circuit through the speaker. And with the setup, we're going to divert any audio that comes in through our set of transistors which are then going to amplify it and get it out through our antenna. And we're going to pick it up using a, a AM radio. And we can fine tune our AM radio band that this sends it out on with our variable capacitor. Now because I need an AM radio and the nice little Radio Shack AM FM radio I had before seems to have sprouted feet in the years since I last used it on these projects. I've had to Penn and Jerry rig something up here. So I've taken my Amazon Basics portable speaker and I've also hooked it up to a Sony Walkman that's got an AM FM radio in it. And we tune it to about a thousand kilohertz on the AM radio because that's what it wants us to tune it to. So turn this on. Turn on our AM radio. And we're going to get a lot of static. Turn this on. And then we need to fine tune it. So we fine-tune it to about where the 
Oh, the static gets quiet, and yeah, it was a bit loud there, but that's so that we can hear any audio that comes through the speaker. So now that we've got it tuned pretty close to the frequency that it's listening at, if I should tap on the speaker here, we can hear the speaker taps coming out of our speaker here listening over the AM radio. And we keep our variable resistor around the middle there because we want to divert the current from our speaker there evenly between the antenna output and the resistor feedback going through our transistor there. So we can obviously tap on it, we can blow on it, and we can hear our air noise coming through the speaker there. And again, we can tap on it as well. You could try to speak really loudly through it if you put your mouth, mouth right up to it, but that is how Project 198 works, the radio announcer. So we'll look at Project 199 now. So with Project 199, we're doing pitch, and there it is in the book, and there it is on our board. And essentially, we're making use of our whistle chip as our output audio instead of the speaker, and using our two transistors, NPN and PMP, with our adjustable resistor, some capacitors, and of course a couple of connections, including our 6-volt lamp. However, this does not light. This is just to help provide conductance for our whistle chip to work. So if I turn on the circuit here, and the whistle chip is fairly quiet, so I may bring this up closer to the camera so that you can hear the whistle chip there. And by using the slider on our variable resistor, we can adjust the pitch or frequency, as is known for electronics, of the output of that whistle chip. So all the way to the left, frequency goes down. Pushing it all to the right makes frequency go up. And of course, if we put it in the middle, then it's about halfway between low and, and high. Now for project 200, which is pitch 2, all we're going to do for that is we're going to increase the capacitance on this end. So we've got the 0.02 .02 microfarad capacitor there, so we're going to add the 0.1 microfarad capacitor on top of it, and that, when you put capacitors in parallel, increases the overall capacitance. So if we turn it on now, and bring it to the camera again. So now our whistle chip is a lower frequency. So by adding capacitance there, we cause the frequency to be lower. Now it isn't in the book there, but if you wanted to do something fun that we could do real quick, we could take something like our, where is it, 70. we could take something like our 100 microfarad capacitor, and this is polarized so the positive sign goes up. If I put a bigger capacitor on there, See, now the circuit just makes a ticking sound. Again, it's not in the book there, but it's something fun you can do. And I need to do the next one fairly quick because I see the camera's running out of battery power. We take our capacitor off. So for project number 201, which is pitch 3, we take our capacitor off, we take our 100,000 ohm resistor off and put our photo resistor on instead. And now when we use the circuit, that should be loud enough for me to not have to put it near the camera, but now, by changing the light input on our photo resistor, we can change the output of that.
And of course the sliding resistor stool does its job. So that is how project number 199 all the way to 201 works. Now we're going to look at 202 while well, I make sure to plug my camera in here before it completely dies on me. So in project 202, that's our flooding alarm. There it is in the book and there it is on the board. Now here we're making use of our alarm IC, which is feeding our speaker so we can hear the audio from it. And it's being controlled via our NPN transistor, and of course we got a resistor on there for protection of the gate. So, obviously we're checking to see if there's any water somewhere, and when it does, the NPN will allow current to flow through, turning on our alarm IC, and we'll get output on the speaker. So when nothing is present and we turn the circuit on, nothing will happen. And of course, if for some reason you have these and they come together, Obviously you wouldn't want that because that would give you a false alarm. So, let to make some space here. Here's our cup of water and it's fresh water. It's not the leftover brine solution from the earlier project where we did. So we put one in there and one in the other. So, we have our contacts in the water there. They're not touching, but our alarm I see is going off. And we can sort of control it by the level. So, that is how that project works. And a little fun fact is, too, is you yourself can actually set this off. body acts as capacitance and resistance and being a little wet adds to the conductance. So that's how project 202 works. Now we're going to look at the last project for this video which is projects 203 through 205 making your own battery. And here in the final project we're looking at project 203 which is make your own battery. And there it is on the book and there it is on the board. And basically, we're making use of our 1000 ohm resistor, our green LED, and big 470k microfarad capacitor, along with our two batteries. Basically, to demonstrate how capacitors store energy and how resistance affects how much the LED can stay lit and how bright it is, things like that. So we take our number two jumper wire and we connect it across our 470 microfarad capacitor and our battery. And while nothing visually appears to happen, what we've done is we've charged up that 470 microfarad capacitor full of energy. So now if we take our 2-snap and move it over to here, see our green LED lights up, and then slowly goes out over time. So, to kind of give you an idea, when it's connected like this, we've created a loop here, current loop here, and that is what creates the charge in our capacitor and charges that up and then when it goes over to here we now make a loop here which is now taking the stored energy out of our capacitor running it through our 1000 ohm resistor and through our LED which makes the LED light up and of course one thing that they don't show in the book here that you can do to create another loop is if you do this now we've created a loop all the way around here so now we're running our LED off of our two batteries here. So now for project 204, what we do is we take away our 470 microfarad capacitor and replace it with a smaller 100 microfarad cap. Put it on there. And then we repeat the same test. So we put our snap across there to charge up our 100 microfarad cap and then bring it over to our LED. Notice our LED lit up, but it went out a lot quicker this time than it did with the 470 microfarad. That's because the 100 microfarad capacitor, it's a smaller number, 
it stores less charge, so the LED cannot stay lit up as long as it can with the 470. Now with Project 205, we leave our capacitor there, but we're going to change out our resistor. So now we go from R2 to R1, which is our 100 ohm resistor. Take it here. And get our snaps back together. And then we repeat it. So charge up our 100 megafat cap, come over to our LED. And you notice it was nice and bright there, but it only lasted less than a second. And again, the reason for that is pretty obvious, because we've gone from a thousand ohms to only a hundred ohms of resistance here. So a lot more current can go through that LED, and thus the LED can run brighter. But because it's drawing more current now, about ten times more, it's now going out a lot sooner, because again, more current there. So that is how projects 203, 204, and 205 are, and that ends this video of Snap Circuits.